Welcome back to the Telosive EV Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. All right, rip the bayonet off, Randy. Did you get an update or not? Please. Wow, I'm we're really enough. jumping right into that, aren't we? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I don't want to wait. I've but been yeah, I've been like dying all week. <laughs> all right. Die. Well, I got my vin on Tuesday. <sighs> what? So it's a matter of time. <gasps> It's happened. Oh, you had to sit on that for so long. Oh, my God. I tweeted it three times and, del- and deleted the draft. I was like, nope. Wow. Nope. Thank you for waiting so long. Congratulations. Nope. Oh, my God. Tuesday. Tuesday. You've known for many days. Yep. My mother wasn't in her 60s when you got <laughs> your VIN. Oh, my God. If I could do the Joker laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, you say if. Come on, Randy. All right. I'll do the joke <laughs> laugh. Yeah. So, <laughs> is the delivery date scheduled? When? All right. So, I alluded oh, to Oh, no. Wait a minute. I alluded to this in the other podcast. So oh. There has been a back and forth with Tesla Inc. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I know what the problem is now. Oh, crap. My. I'm guessing they don't want to deliver the car before your big trip. Oh, no, I do not get to have my car before my big trip. Mm. They said Darn. we got you a VIN, and it's and it's being shipped out from a. I don't know. I don't know where it's coming from. He didn't tell me that part. Well, but, you, we can figure it out if you have the VIN. Do you have it with you? I don't know if it's actually on my. It's definitely on my wife's phone. I'm sure it's on hers, but yeah, if uh, it's the eleventh character, right? Uh, that's whether an A or a F. A means Austin. F means Fremont. Ooh. I assume it'll be F. Hang on, hang on. Mm. I think she might have I'll texted me when it happened. Okay. Uh, we gotta I figure hope. this out. I'll just <laughs> be the on. antithesis of you, Drew, just to figure out. Or just to play the idea that there's going to be an Austin-made Tesla on this podcast. Not the car, but at least the That other. would be cool. I'm pretty sure all of Texas is building long range, though, which is why I'm pretty sure it's Fremont. Um, but I, I, it would be cool if it wasn't. It would make sense if it's Fremont because I'm not getting it in a week. That's for Well, sure. you're far from either factory, yeah, right? I wouldn't be surprised. I'm closer, to, I'm closer to Austin than I am Fremont. I don't believe that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you're right, but it's still it's still got to get on a truck and it's got to drive. And well, the way they told me at the service place, they were like, "Oh no, that that's getting loaded to a train. Once it crossed the eastern train, something that's when we'll schedule your appointment." Here's the thing. Hmm. Okay, I can't find it right now. I probably I trains are great. They help sh- move our cars. <laughs> so. <laughs> so <laughs> We. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? It's just me and Mike have had a lot of talks about trains. It's a train joke. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. All right. Well, my delay is not funny. Sorry, that went off the rails. Uh, ahead, ah, you did it. Okay, now it's, now it's funny. <laughs> now I can laugh with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ugh. Um okay. So here's the thing. Here's the deal, folks. No, I'm being serious. I'm I'm not kidding. I'm being serious, folks. Let me be real. <sighs> Come on, man. Let me, uh, Let me be clear. <laughs> Let me be clear. PPF be like. I don't think I'm going to get the like I hope I hope I get the tax rebate, but it's the delivery date they says between the 31st and the 3rd now. Oh my God! Yeah, hang on. You could not be more on the edge here. I could... <laughs> know, I know, I, I it's like know. Constantly but, in limbo. But, but they already told me delivery date on the thirty first. If we get it on lot on the thirty first, you're not getting it on the thirty first. It doesn't matter when we pick it up. It ha- you have to wait a day, minimum. <laughs> so the soonest I would get is like April first. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> nice joke. You fool! You. <laughs> it would be man. You thought so, you were gonna get it in March. Ha! It they haven't issued the IRS guidance yet. I so know. 
I know. There's still a chance. You want to know how it's been so hard to keep it a secret? It's because I've been thinking about how I bring this up to you guys throughout the week. Like, hey, what do you guys take the chance? Because, like, mm-hmm. it, it's 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 annoying because we were told February and yeah. all of March. We're like, all right, hey, got even pushed up. They're like, nope, never mind. Unless <laughs> unless they get it um, here by next week. Then I think there's a chance, but so you at this point, me there's a chance. Mm. I don't think there's a chance. Mm. However, one person, somebody on the phone told us they're like, well, the battery was made here in the U.S. And so the battery part should already be taken care of. So theoretically, you should still be good with the with the tax rebate because it's already it's possible. Been done. That's what one lady said. You know, I, mm-hmm. so here's my issue with customer service. Uh, Drew oh, talked man. about this on tech, and he was talking about um, T-Mobile. I have a bad service. Tesla story too. So go ahead. Nice. Please. Oh, I can't wait. This has to do with the service. This has to do with something with last week when he was doing the podcast with us. I'm sure of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Cool. So, um, my issue with customer service uh, if if our audience is listening to this episode before tech you know tech uh, we talk about customer service um my issue with the, uh, with the lack of continuity is one person said they couldn't change our delivery location or time of pickup hmm. and then another person said yeah we can change it i was getting each time we talked to somebody we were getting a different answer and so and that was through text, through phone call, and then finally I went in person because they were changing it to a different location that we we didn't order through them, we didn't anything. We weren't even asked what lo, what where would we like to pick it up. They just like assumed, oh well, this one's closer. And mileage is closer, but the way this area is set up is actually going to be it, it'll take me a lot longer to get there because imagine taking four lanes of traffic and you and you bring it down to. Uh, one and that one lane mm-hmm. goes underwater, and it's, <laughs> it's surrounded by four different bases, and just uh-huh. you can imagine the rush hour traffic that would be there at all times of the day. I don't like going uh, in that direction, but there is one technically closer there. I just we don't ever use it. We went to uh, one that's considered further by two miles more, but we I get there with Too under much. an hour every time. And uh, so we went there. It's like, I don't want to – if you're telling me April 3rd and that's because it's going to this location, I don't want to go to that location. I ordered from here. The store here got the referral, so you guys are getting the uh, the uh, commission for it because that's how that works. It, it's based off of store, not individual person. It's based off mm. of stores uh, that get that order. I learned that uh, like two months ago or whenever we ordered it. So I was like – you guys are getting the commission. We asked for it to be here. At no point did I ever make any contact with the other service center. And they're like, yep, yeah, right, yeah, we could change it. I'm like, well, the two other people, like, I'm being told I can't change it. And like, no, yeah, we could change it. And he's like, it might change your, your date. I'm like, well, at this point, if it's already going into April, how is that going to affect anything? He's like, yeah. He's like, well, this location gets all of West Virginia, D.C. area, most of D.C. area, and Tennessee and we also get Virginia, whereas the other service center, the one that's closer to you, is only getting that region of uh, of Virginia. So maybe you might be better to go over to that one. And I was like, yeah, but if it's coming in on a train, as you said it is, the train runs through. It's it's side by side with the freeway. I know because I see the train all the time. It's go, It's going to stop at both locations at the same time and if it's a day apart, I don't see that being the deciding factor on pickup date. And he's like, yeah, it's true. He's like, hey, it says here the 31st to the 3rd. Well, that's overzealous of them. They shouldn't give you a date. They don't know that that time. I, he goes, I guarantee this date is going to get pushed because it's it, it just got loaded onto the dock maybe yesterday. So it's in transit. It, it's not even... It has to be coming from Fremont because, like, it's not even across country yet. It's, there's no way they they have that information and they know what that is. And they're like, they, somebody manually went in because maybe they have less traffic coming through them so they can update their records. But 
I like to default on the automated system because it's more accurate. And honestly, I, we can't handle the amount of traffic, foot traffic we get anyway. So I just rely on automation because whatever they tell us is what you're going to get told. And at least we're all on the same page. If they're going in and they're manually changing the dates, you're going to be given different information. Like, yep. That's what we've been struggling with. Like new question then, sir, can I give you the money right now? So that way it's in, in March. And he's like, nope. It has to be at at pickup, not not uh, before then. I'm like, ah, you understand why I'm doing this? He's like, yeah, I know. And believe me, he's like, hey, public traded company, we want to get as many numbers out within the first quarter as much as possible, and it looks better if we can get this delivered sooner rather than later. But at this point, we're at we're on the we're at the cusps of just transit and outside elements. Okay, fine. Hey, is my car gonna have hardware four? Just a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean just a rumor he's like that's just some internet rumor N- none of that stuff is confirmed and he's like we find out the same time you find out when daddy elon tweets <laughs> like, it's ah. it's in the owner's manual they make reference to well, hardware for so but, randy have you tried taking yeah. a page out of the old west and sticking up the train halfway across <laughs> the country so that way you get it sooner yeah <laughs> well i need a rebate when i could just get the car for free well, you can give them the money <laughs> later. It's just you're taking delivery. No, if I'm a... robbing the train, I'm going all out. I'm not going to take Model S or Model X then. I might as well. Take the whole thing. Mm. The whole Ooh, is that that new cherry ultraviolet red? I'll take it. That's Ultraviolet mine. red. That's Did you ask one. them about taking delivery on where you're going to be next week? I guess that's what I was alluding they can't, to. They, they, they can't change it, and they don't even think it's going to – they don't even think it's going to be attainable by said time anyway. And if I took delivery in Colorado, that's that causes more issues logistically with flying with baby and they're just too much. They're, they're, that's that's a headache I can't take. Okay, that's too much. Fair enough. Wow. Well, well I'm sorry to hear that. We really we hope that VIN, trains, but at what cannot... cost? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, hopefully it doesn't do the same thing that trains have been doing in Ohio and in Nevada with derailing. And it does the opposite and is actually quicker than car or plane. Like everyone who loves trains claims that they do or are or are as efficient <laughs> as and gets to you quicker. So that way you can uh, they take are very advantage efficient. of the tax incentive. Well, the good news is you're not buying an LFP battery pack, so there's still a decent chance that it could qualify for the full credit, even if guidance is issued before you get your car. So here's hoping that they have the proper materials and they were mined in the right place, or the IRS can be just like the DMV and take their precious time, and maybe they don't issue guidance for many months and you've got extra time to qualify. That would be cool, but I'm sorry you have to wait. A is bit LFP that sucks. like a, a definitive uh, disqualifier for getting the full tax credit? I don't think they make it here. Pretty in the much States. because they don't make any LFP battery packs here, or at least vehicle grade. Tesla's LFP batteries all come from CATL, so they're manufactured in China, and then they just ship them over and assemble the car here. So I think that means it gets half the credit, but... Um, Half yeah, on I would half, say there's. It's impossible. This is why I hate tax credits, is because they're constantly changing and they're constantly mm-hmm. adjusting what yeah. does and doesn't qualify. And they told us starting March is when the battery materials would be required. And then they haven't issued the guidance and we're halfway through March. So it's like, uh, I guess you still get the full credit now, regardless of where the battery pack came from. So. Th- like, it wasn't until, I think, December or November of last year that they decided there was going to be a grace period, like January, February. It wasn't going to matter where the materials came from. So on a monthly basis, basically, they're changing the terms. That's why the Model Y had this whole, like, Model Y needs to be 55 k or less to qualify. And everyone's like, oh, no, they snubbed Tesla. Now Tesla doesn't get it. And then... Tesla lowers prices so that some of them get it, and then IRS raises the limit. Okay, now it can be up to eighty thousand to qualify. It's like on a weekly basis. They're like, "Here's what it does. Here's what it doesn't. Here's what it does." And I'm like, "Just shut up. Just 
this shouldn't be on the consumer level, in my opinion. If you want to encourage EV adoption, you should be making tax breaks or tax incentives on the manufacturer side so that they can genuinely lower prices rather than have us do all of this post-delivery math of, well, if you get this kind and you get thirty-seven fifty off your federal taxes, but then 2024 comes around, then it becomes a point-of-sale rebate, and then the price, what? So how much does the car cost? Well, depends on when you buy it, when you take delivery, where you take delivery. It's like so much end work for us opposed to just let the businesses and the government figure that out so that we can just say, Here's how much this vehicle costs. There it is. And it doesn't matter on a weekly basis what it does and doesn't qualify. <laughs> it just, it's just so messy. Weekly, it's now daily for Randy in regards <laughs> to yeah. that window. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. But Well, I, geez, that's I think you'll get it. I think you've got a good chance of getting the full I credit hope. personally. I was told that because uh, I, I said, like, you know, can I? sit in a performance Y just to pretend like I have it. Do you have like we don't got any unlock. I'm like okay, fine. So what if I give you a thousand dollars? Um <laughs> do you have I a was performance told that now? The, the drive <laughs> the drive of uh the performance Y is just as smooth as the long range now. They're like, oh you know with the oh, suspension and this that and the other Yeah they're, as, they as much as I've and, heard over the time that the Y's been around since 2020 now it's improved performance has usually well i'm sure it's improved but typically the performance is a lot stiffer than the long range but he said you will notice it more in the long range three and the performance three than you would in long range y and performance y he's like it's Mm. it's not noticeable anymore sounds like we have a test to do yeah sounds like i did hear elon say something about suspension updates that they rolled out the last couple months but I I haven't seen anyone cross compare them so I don't it could be Tesla just now being we Tesla have or it could be genuine EV exclusive well, we can <laughs> give it a go because that's cool to know because the thing that I was really excited about the long range is like oh well I like comfort and he was like yep yeah, yeah you're gonna have that comfort still so Tesla also said that they could replicate ultrasonic sensors within the matter of I got an email <laughs> a couple uh, weeks <laughs> I got an email about at least it was. I think it's my. I gotta. I, let me just do a quick search on Tesla. They told me that your Model Y is not going to have. I guess it was on hers, not mine. Okay, so never mind. It wasn't my Park in-house. Assist and Smart Summon and all. Yeah, that. they told me they're like your Model Y is uh, not going to have the sensors, which means it's your 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 summons and stuff like that all temporarily disabled. But we have welcome to the club. Every intention of bringing it back. Um, in a future over the air. I wonder if they've covered themselves legally because I'm debating, like, why is it taking this long for them to roll that out? There's They, they took out the sensors in October. It's now mid-March. Yeah. And they've done Beta 11 rollouts and updated Model S and X. We got new color options. We got steering wheels now and new glass that's more visible. And so, like, There's all these updates that have gone on, but they haven't rolled out Park Assist to the vehicles without... Software's probably not I wonder if yet, there's a the new architecture, maybe. There's a hiccup. How do, how do we know if it'll ever be ready? We don't until Tesla says it is. Well, that's that's my question. Is like, is there a limit to how long they can say, "Oh, we'll get to that later," or no. at a certain point, do they need to issue a statement? Or for as long so as it could be thirty years that robo taxis are going to be a thing. <laughs> yeah, for as long as we've heard that robo taxis have are a thing, I'm pretty sure they can just hold park assist for that same amount of time, and people will be complaining. But there's nothing we can really do besides say, why. <laughs> that was such a great pause, Mike. Why? Why? It's like so people with beta have deactivated the ultrasonic sensors mm-hmm. and they can see the occupancy network and they still have the lines and stuff. So people are like, I can see it working. They just haven't gotten around to. Wait, have I been actually. Maybe not, it doesn't work. I haven't been using the ultrasonic sensors this whole time then. 
I think if you're on beta, that's what I hear. It's because people have like taped over them and they still get the lines and stuff. That makes what just happened yesterday that much more impressive then. Because someone parked. What really... happened? So I went to a Sharks game uh, yesterday or the day before. Whenever this podcast comes out, I went to a Sharks game a few days ago. Um, mm-hmm. And I parked kind of close Thursday. to like a t- Sure. That is a day of the week that <laughs> I probably went to a Sharks game. Uh I parked next to a light pole, and it told me I was close, but j- just stop, basically, is what it said. And I looked, and yeah, fair enough. It was pretty much stop. Uh, when we got back to the car after a disappointing loss against the Kraken, uh, there was a Subaru <laughs> parked probably millimeters from my license plate. Uh, Ooh. It was it was pretty close like to where I could barely fit my fingers in there to like push my license plate back. Um, it wasn't touching it, but when my wife got into the car, it was now saying stop at a different location instead of saying like on the front left, kind of where the light pole was. It's now like right in front of the car. It's like saying, just don't go forward at all ever. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Interesting. Because the car Hmm. was, not uh, it wasn't running i guess per se mm-hmm. kind of hard to say it was not put in drive or reverse between when we left and there was no car and when we got back and yeah. there was a car so i guess the occupancy occupancy network isn't that bad for my experience but i could be wrong who knows <laughs> maybe yeah. i maybe i misread the tweet or something but i saw someone say they had it working on beta but hmm. uh it's still bizarre if it if it is working that well i don't know why they would wait this long and still be sending you know randy emails hey it's not gonna work it's like uh why don't you just add it if you can do it maybe it's other things that aren't working like a summon or um park assist that they can't get right but the park a Sorry, auto park, they can't get right. But park assist is working or something. I don't know. I When I told my mom about that, she was like, just use the camera. She's like, never had park assist on any of her cars. She's like, I don't, why would you need that? Just use the camera. <laughs> I was like, you know, helpful when you're pulling in. There's something about that <laughs> wisdom that just shines right through. Because they did it without it for so long. They're not wrong. I mean, camera was the biggest upgrade since and we're like wow we're gonna be using cameras for everything and test it helps when you're backing up yeah yeah, the camera doesn't do much for you when you're pulling in though for me it does what does it do when you're pulling in it helps me gauge my single car um garage like when i'm in i use the camera to see if i'm past a certain line so i know my garage door will close fine you i have i have i back into my garage so I, I oh. I'm uh I'm versatile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I back in too, but I mean at like a parking lot. If I'm pulling in straight to a parking lot, that's when I usually use the. Park I assist, is it always tells me how far use away camera the for is. parking, regardless, because even in parking lot, I want to know if I am if I can see the white lines come up in the in the camera. Then I know I parked in because sometimes I just can't. I don't have the the time or the means to. So you activate in. the camera yeah. when you're pulling in. Mm-hmm. I huh. sometimes sometimes I have it open while I'm driving because I want to know who's near me. I, I that's my blind spot checker. Wow. I like that better than hmm. the than the the graph. I like to actually see the, the thing and and I do it because it came from a paranoia that you know. I always get the boop 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 left pillar blind can't navigate whatever and i'm like okay and i open mm-hmm. it and i'm like it's not that bad calm down mm-hmm. tesla but i'll keep it open and from there like i just like to see cars coming near me um and i've trained myself to do certain uh you know put the blinker on left or right and when i'm merging lanes it helps me get a better understanding about what's near me or not because sometimes i got people zooming up that don't want to let you pa- you know how they your blinkers on so they drive quicker so you so that you can go behind them so that has happened. I have driven in California. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. <laughs> we are all, we are all trained. I know in how that. That it's works. on the, I'm pretty sure that's on the driver's license test now that like, Oh yeah. If someone puts their blinker <laughs> on, you got to drive quicker. What do you do if someone in front of you signals to get in your lane? Drive faster. Extend middle finger. Accelerate. Yeah. Oh <laughs> try to trip up their, uh, if it's a test, try to trip up their computer system. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I'll start merging 
And then all of a sudden I got boop, 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 and I see a red blinking car passing by. I'm like, oh, that guy was just being a jerk. So I just use the cameras now and I like that. So I kind of use uh, I, I use the cameras a lot, a lot as a supplementary thing um, in most of the community. Hey, can I ask you guys a question? And now that we're all Tesla owners and this is the first time I've done it since Drew's picked up his car. <laughs> Um, now uh, you waited like eight months. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I mean, this is the first time I did Just something since sure. you've been a car owner. Oh okay okay. Maybe it goes to say how well I take care of the car or how bad I don't I don't take care of the car. Um, th- yesterday two days ago, I washed my car inside and out, and I felt so in love with my car again. I'm like, oh, you're so <laughs> perfect. Like I felt so prideful with like I'm giving my baby a bath. Meanwhile, Sage is over here waiting for his bath on day three. I'm like, no, no, no. Phoenix first. Phoenix first. Sage later. So, but I cleaned it and I vacuumed it and I made it as pristine, clean as I could. Yes, Man. It's very uplifting. I have so much pride in my car again because I got rid of all the bug kill from driving to Florida and back. I'm like, this car is perfect. Do you guys feel... <laughs> This sense of pride as a Tesla owner, when you get your car, just you clean it with a baby's diaper so it doesn't scratch nothing. Like, is it just <laughs> not me? I, Hopefully, I'm... not a used diaper. <laughs> <laughs> the mo- the, the ammonia in it helps. Oh dear lord! Nice. Uh, yes, I think every single time that I have, maybe not every single time, but usually, I usually take a photo every single time. I should have contradicted myself. But yeah, I typically take a photo when I'm done washing the car, both inside and out, just to admire it. I usually po- or position it next to our truck because... Are you sure that's the photo you took, though? Or is this some post-AI happening? <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> it's a joke from the tech podcast. Go watch the Randy. podcast. Yeah. Right, <laughs> I'm not talking to you anymore. Love I'm talking to Drew moon. now. Um, <laughs> well, now I'm not talking to him either. Um, <sighs> I usually put those two cars together because they're both gray. Or I guess the Y is midnight silver metallic and the truck is whatever it is. <laughs> I totally forgot. Yeah, it's, but it's they gray. look nice together. And especially when the Tesla is cleaned, it's they like, match. they look great. Uh, so, yes. But they I haven't had that good. experience in a while. I've been busy as heck every single week and a weekend to the point where every time I look at my car, I'm like, next time I get an hour, <laughs> I'll do it. Hmm. But yeah, mm-hmm. mine is definitely overdue. But I guess the Midnight Silver Metallic hides the dirt pretty well. I like, I I don't even need to wash the car to get that feeling. Like I love the, just the way it contrasts, especially now that we got some sunshine where we are, it's been so cloudy and so rainy. Do we? And it just lights up the so. the white reflection of the interior is matching the white exterior. And I parked it next to this, uh, what do you call it? Like a... Uh, white man? Not a... <laughs> <laughs> it's not a apricot tree, but the, the tree with all the white flowers on it. And it was just this beautiful contrast of just like the the accents and yeah i still am very happy every time i get to drive it despite all of its flaws and many issues i have with it i still i love admiring it especially anytime i like get the mail or uh pulling back a waste wheel or something i just look at it and it's like yeah it's just a beautiful beautiful design even though it's been around for a long time and many people are like i'm bored i want it to look different i know i i think it's important to just kind of appreciate and take pride and value in what you have even if it is older and uh yeah the car washing experience definitely helps enhance that because you're you're taking something that may be a bit old or now is a bit dirty and you're trying to make it new again trying to make it feel fresh and uh that's always a good good way to appreciate and fall in love with what you have opposed to buying a whole new car. <laughs> it's dirty. I need a new one. That's right. But yeah, they, we had some, uh, stitching coming loose on the passenger headrest. Oh no. Last week. 
and it wasn't super noticeable, but it was enough that it was getting worse over time that I was like, mm, we should probably see if this is covered under warranty at least. So we sent the picture to Tesla service and they said, you qualify for mobile service this time, which I didn't believe because mm. they'd done that previously where they said, you qualify for mobile service. And then like the day before they go, actually, no, you need to bring it in. Um, you don't qualify. So I was half, ex I scheduled the mobile service appointment. It was literally happening during the recording last week. So I was watching them do it in real time. <laughs> My wife talked to the guy and everything. And basically I was half expecting them to cancel the appointment. So I was like, yeah, sure. Do it Friday morning. That's fine. And, uh, no, they didn't cancel. They were like, nope, we'll show up. And, uh, but before they showed up, they kept sending us this approved cost estimate thing. And I was like, I'm only interested really in repairing it if it's covered under warranty. Like, I know it's been a while since delivery. So I was like, is this going to cost us a huge amount to repair? If so, I'll just live with it. It's not that big a deal. It's not a, I don't look at that part of the car that much. So I'm like, I don't really care. But if it doesn't cost anything, I'd like you to fix it. So they sent me these cost est estimates. First, it's $34. And I'm like, mm, I messaged the guy. I was like, is it covered under warranty or not? And he was like, you just need to hit approve. But uh, if just we have someone come out and, and inspect it, like we need someone to inspect it. And then they'll tell you if it's covered under warranty or not. And I was like, okay, but we don't want to repair it if it's not covered Sus. under warranty. So I was like, why don't I bring it to you? Because I was like, we're going near the service center to visit some friends anyway. So I was like, can't I just bring it to you guys? Like, they didn't ask me, do I want to do mobile service, basically. I just said I needed service, and they said, you qualify for mobile. And I was offering, I'll bring it out to you so that you don't have to have a guy come all the way out here and look at it. And if he doesn't want to cover it under warranty, then we're out of luck. Uh, so they were like, no, no, we'll just come out there. You just hit approve. <laughs> and, uh, if it's under warranty, then you won't have to pay anything. Um, so the guy came out and said it was covered under warranty. Um, and my, my wife went out there. It, he came in a model three, by the way. So this is the first time two model threes were on the property right next to each other. I was like, Whoa, that's kind of cool. But Basically, she asked him about it, and he was, like, not very clear, I guess. He basically just said, mm, I think I'll try and fix it. <laughs> because he was trying to see if there was a way they could, like, reattach it. Boy, that aspires whole... confidence, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'll give it a shot, basically. She's like, okay. And then um, he tries to replace it. He can't make the existing headrest work. Um, but he tells us it is covered under warranty, so he gets a new headrest that he had in his Model 3, replaces the headrest, and uh, asks her to come out look at it. She comes out and looks at it, and she says, yeah, looks good, looks fine, and he heads off, and then the cost estimate is still there. It's like, your bill is $34, and I was like, but it's under was warranty. it covered or not? And they were like, the part is covered. The appointment of having the guy come out there is what cost the $34. Mm. <laughs> and I was like... You didn't say that. <laughs> it's like you didn't tell us that. So I was pretty ticked off because, I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a ton of money. It's not $112 like T-Mobile. <laughs> and, you know, we did get a brand new headrest. It was a new part. But I would have been far less interested having known that's what it would have cost. Also, I would have much rather bring it there oh, yeah. so that they could inspect it there rather than waste like an hour's worth of driving um, to do this. And yeah, I just, I'm disappointed, but I can't say I'm surprised because I already had very little hope after the last three service visits trying to fix the wind noise and it didn't really go anywhere. It's still random. It's still like sometimes mm -hmm. I'll shut the door and I don't hear anything. Other times I shut the door and it sounds like the window's open and it's not. I've just kind of accepted it. It doesn't really bother me. So I've just, I've just taken the L on that one. But when we were getting service for this, I was like, okay... They might fix it, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm just expecting now as a Tesla customer that there's probably going to be poor communication and they're not going to do a great job. And I'm just going into that expecting it now. <laughs> so I guess my expectations were pretty low. Um, my wife was a little bummed, greatly. but she, 
Yeah. <laughs> she was she was a little bummed, but she was like, "Well, it looks better. It looks he did a good job. They did fix it." And I guess you know, I was it was right there in the app. It was like, "How would you rate your service?" I was like, <laughs> "You're asking me." But it's right there in the app. It's like gas savings this month, like a hundred bucks. So I was like, "Okay, well." We saved 100 bucks on gas, 34 of it went to repairing the headrest. And we didn't have to go to the service center and wait around and not have a car for a day. So we're just trying to be a bit more grateful. But yeah, see, seeing, um, I think Mike's seen them, Caleb's stories in the Discord about oh. Tesla continuously reaching out to him after he said he's not interested. There's been like people calling him and texting him. It's like, there's just such a massive communication problem. And now Randy telling the same story about cars and where can I get them? And, oh, you got to take delivery here. Now you can't move. That's my gas savings. Nice. Hmm. Yeah. That's good. That's from the trip. How much is your home electricity? Oh, uh, it personal? should say in the app right there. Are we asking per kilowatt hour? Fourteen yeah. cents. Wow! Yeah, that's way better than I get. <laughs> Are you looking at charging here. stats per month or per year on there, Randy? That looked month. like per month. I'd that be surprised month. if he saved one hundred and forty dollars in a year. No, it, it, <laughs> no if be... you want to know year, I'm guessing this is year to date. I guess we could all do it. Yeah, yeah. year to date, uh, uh, thirteen hundred dollars. Well, I haven't had it for a year yet, to be fair. So it's kind of so. There's my stats, a uh, home, and supercharging. So fourteen cents is really good. I can't get that. You want to come out here, Drew? <laughs> I do, but I can't. There. Let's go to this Florida is... together. Yeah, that would be fun. Whoa! Wow! Dang, Mike has saved the most. My well, I goodness, drive the Mike. most, and when That's I'm not fair. driving it, the wife is driving it. So. That's fair. Your your house is twenty seven cents a kilowatt hour. Yeah, it's That's exp- pretty good. It's not it, well. We usually Wait, try to charge yours, it on off peak. We don't usually charge. Oh, what it the heck? The it changed. Oh, it's because it's for the year. That's why. What's your um, kilowatt? At home, it's twenty four, and mm. that's on the EV tier. So it's twenty four cents off peak, um, which is pretty horrible compared to the rest of the country. There's like my parents. I'm excited to visit later this year because they pay six cents a kilowatt hour. <gasps> Whoa. So I'm like, dang, that's going to be cheap. Um, they don't have a fast charger, so it'll be a trickle charge, but I don't care. I don't, I'll don't. i leave it plugged in and just... Right. I'll Honestly, pay them back the trickle if they charge want. thing for me has been more than adequate. I'm trickle charging right now. It would be less than $4 to go to go from 0 to 100 on my car from up All you have there, to do is drive is all the way up to where they live and then plug it in. I'll just charge there every day. Yeah. yeah I see no issue with that. <laughs> How much? But, wait. Yeah, I, how much is mine? I, Fourteen cents. How do how do I calculate that? What math did you? It's do? there. It's on the blue. Yeah. Okay. I'm in it. You just scroll down. At home, it says 14. the price per kilowatt so, hour. So. I wish I had. Yeah, 14. I know. But. How how do I now do? Like, what would it take me to go from zero to a hundred, hypothetically? Your battery pack has, I forget. I think like seventy-seven kilowatt hours, roughly. Okay. So fourteen cents times seventy seven. Plus there's some degradation maybe a little bit. But mm-hmm. yeah. Seventy seven is probably bucks a safe estimate. The most Sheesh. ten dollars to go from zero to full for you. Sheesh. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm about to go. Kiss so I always car. double it. I was like, compare it to a gas tank, roughly. Probably of less the for same you guys, caliber, but... you'd be paying fifty. Easy. Yeah. No, I I would be lucky to get out of a gas station for fifty bucks where I live. Yeah, <laughs> That's, we never got out for fifty. Um, it was usually sixty, seventy. Oh my goodness! Um, maybe fifty if you weren't on empty. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I I always tweet every month. I I tweet out my gas savings just to keep people in the loop. And I was like, hey, I another month the gas saved, and people are like, twenty four cents a kilowatt hour. Oh my god. You know, and Texas is going to have the cheapest. They're going to get that. Um, I don't know if we talked about that. Did you see the Investor Day thing? That because Tesla's like an electricity provider there. They're like a utility. Oh, is company. that why their power didn't go out this winter? <laughs> yeah, right. But they said for charging at night, um, it'll be thirty bucks a month for unlimited vehicle charging. Oh my goodness! So 
thirty bucks a month for you to just charge as much as you want as long Load as it's up all those between cyber the trucks. hours of. <laughs> <laughs> they said it's because it's really windy, so Texas has all this wind power at night that isn't being used. Um, so they were like, we're trying to take advantage of that by encouraging people to charge their electric cars when it's really windy, so they have somewhere to send all that extra juice. Plus, they're launching this new perk for. Tesla Solar customers, which I thought was cool, which is obviously I don't honestly I don't know why they didn't have this before. But instead of um, you know when you generate more electricity than you're using, mm -hmm. typically they would either pump that back into the grid, or if you have a power wall, it will charge off the power wall, which you can buy now, separately now. Rather than that's right, that's right. They just updated that. You can finally buy the power walls by themselves, but. Now they have a perk or a toggle in settings that charges the car with excess solar hmm. rather than sell it back to the grid, which I would honestly be more in favor of because the, the rates that the grid gives you is pretty crap. Um, so any extra energy you generate that you're not using going back to the grid, eh, I would rather just have a toggle in the car that says if you're generating extra power, put it into the battery pack and let it charge purely from solar so that I know the battery pack isn't pulling anything from the grid because most people charge at night and that's when your solar is not generating anything. So I was like, that's cool because now it's like the inverse of on peak versus off peak. Now it's like, if it's sunny, charge the car. If it's night, just enjoy the off peak rates, I guess. And then your house probably won't be using as much energy anyway, because your car's not charging. So I thought that was neat. And long overdue. I was like, that should have been there for a while. <laughs> Agreed. But power walls being sold separately is kind of a big deal though. My, my cousin was excited for that because he has Tesla solar, but he didn't get power walls, but I'm he wanted to too. down the road. I wanted to get it, but can't really justify it with uh, <laughs> just all the crazy stuff going on. But sure. Uh, I, if I was definitely it's expensive, yeah, they're it's... still pretty pricey though. Yeah. I think it definitely pays off in the end, but depends how long I stay at this house versus another. it's kind of like dealing with solar. How long am I going to yeah. be here? And do I want to deal with like paying this off for the next 20 years or do I mm -hmm. pass that off to the next owner of the house and all that? So yeah. Yeah. Who knows? It is a very large upfront investment still. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a weird game you have to calculate. And I think it, Makes a lot of sense if you're in a place that you plan on being for a long time, but um, this is why I'm so so much more in favor of just putting solar on the car, because <laughs> right. that just means if I move or whatever, I still got the solar there. It's still charging, and you know I'm not too worried about just our lights and house electricity. That isn't very expensive, but the car is the most expensive thing. That's what's consuming all the energy. So mm -hmm. if the car didn't need that, power wall plus. That's <laughs> what? What? <laughs> they have Powerwall and Powerwall Plus. That just blew my mind. Randy, would you would you subscribe to Twitter Blue if they give you discounted prices on solar and Powerwall? $8 a month is what you're Well, what's the discount? Well, let's say they they lock you into a contract basically. <laughs> like you need to you need to have Twitter Blue for like <laughs> That's I don't know, 5 <laughs> years, but you get Twice whatever that would cost you off of the Powerwall. Wait a minute. So, <laughs> Wait a minute. Times 12 times 5. $480. For so they take $1,000 off the Powerwall if you agree to have Twitter blue for five years. Oh, yeah, well then, yeah. That's that's half the money. Okay. Oh, Powerwall well, how much, well, how much is the wall? How much is the wall? Hang on. How much is this wall? That's it's like $9,600, I think. Yeah. I'm confused why I don't think they're LFP still. Aren't they still using 2170 cells for the power walls? I think so. And LFP is definitely going to be cheaper. Like iron-based batteries make so much sense for energy storage. I'm kind of confused that they haven't been able to switch power walls to iron-based cathodes and be at a lower price. Maybe they're not worried about lowering prices cuz demand is so high, but now that they're like emailing people about it and trying to get more people on board, I feel like now's a good time to switch those to LFP. Mm -hmm. 9,200, sorry. 
Yeah. Um, they could, mm. I mean, I don't know what goes into these things, but it could be elf P it could be lithium. I think it, I I'm think pretty it, sure it's 2170s. Yeah. I think it is 2170s just because it seems like they have a surplus of that. They're not too concerned yes. about that. It doesn't really make sense to have your LFP batteries that you've been waiting for overseas to just go immediately in a power wall. If you're also selling a product like the model three that requires that uh energy storage system versus sure. where the power wall it's like yeah you could throw in whatever battery you want as long as it meets this criteria of storage capacity so mm -hmm. yeah I my think only counter to that is that they're not they're not like demand uh they don't have a ton of demand for the lfp model three like there's not yes. a huge wait time on it so They've got a lot of them in inventory already, and I'm pretty sure each Powerwall only has like 13, maybe 15 kilowatt hours. They're not huge. Maybe that's, so like, that could be the reason why, though, that they've now opened up the option to buy a Powerwall outright, is that now they mm. have that capacity to throw in whatever batteries they can at any given moment, whether it's a 2170 or uh -huh. an LFP, and just deliver it to the customer. It's just now you have to keep track of whatever power wall has what. So if it's got LFP, it's got a red sticker. If it's 2170s, you put in a blue sticker or whatever. I don't know if uh, you want to know specifically what's inside of your power wall, but uh, I don't know the process I'm, in regards to that. I just did a quick Google out of curiosity and you did a Google. Um, I did one. Oh, I'm wow. the last guy using Google. Everyone else is on Bing now. But <laughs> they're saying the this one website, even next, is saying that the most popular battery pack supplied by Tesla contains... Um, no, that's... They're talk, sorry, they're talking about cars. Oh. Uh, it said 85 kilowatt hours, but I'm trying to figure out like which cells they put in it, but... They don't really disclose that. Like, in which... I see... They've References said that, to them being nickel, though. Yeah, there could be nickel. Oh, I'd have to do I don't think research. they have as much of that. Um, lithium ion that uses lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt oxide chemistry. Um, why? I got a complete tangent really quickly because maybe I missed something. Why can't we order a long range Model 3? <laughs> Randy, Sorry. when was the last time you went on the configuration yeah. page to look <laughs> at the Model say. 3s? Wait, what? That's funny. When was the last time you looked at the Model 3 configuration page? Uh, maybe when I ordered mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah, they turned that off, I think, eight months ago? Eight or nine. It was like um, early. Why? It's been a while. It's been early. I have a good theory, but I, I don't. I, we don't have official word on why, but I, I think I know why. I'll take a theory. I'm pretty sure that the 4680 ramp took longer than expected, and that's why Giga Texas started building regular Model Ys with 2170 cells. And because they needed to expand production of Model Y using 2170 cells, and the Model Y is a lot cheaper to build with the single piece castings, and they can sell it for more because it's a crossover. I think they diverted 2170 battery packs towards more Model Y production plus semi production, and they turned off the long range Model 3 because, for one, it was probably very popular, but also it was using big battery packs that could be in way higher margin vehicles because the Model 3 still doesn't have the single piece castings and because it's a sedan, they charge less for it. So they were like, these battery packs will be more profitable in the Model Y. So we're going to just expand Model Y production. Whereas they said when they turned it off, it was like coming in 2023. It still but says that right now. No, it still says that. <laughs> so um, yeah, there's a bunch of people that are like, when are they going to bring that back? But the weird thing is there's still been like a ton of long range model threes in inventory. Um, so they're still like, I think low key making them at not high volume, but um, they took it off the configurator, but you can still find them. They're like, I've seen some long range model threes from 2023, even though the configurator hasn't let you order one for a long time. So 
I think that the Model 3 is just not that uh, affordable, I guess. But What? No, this is the most affordable Tesla you can buy. <laughs> it has to be. Oh, no, it's not... It's not an inventory anymore. Never mind. I was trying to find. I that. think they're trying to get more people to buy the rear-wheel drive. The, that that price that's quite the price jump since the last time I saw a real wheel uh, drive Model Three. I don't remember it being forty two nine. It was much worse not too long ago. <laughs> I know. <laughs> a few but months that, ago, it was forty five. Oh. I kind of potential hope. savings. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, now it's thirty-one. <laughs> no, it's not. There's it's actually 29. some big. Uh, I'll show you guys. There's actually oh, some demo that. models they're trying to sell that they put some pretty massive discounts on, which is kind of cool. Hmm. They're getting, you know, there's there's a Model Three in inventory not far from here with two hundred and forty miles on the odometer. That's forty-three, and they're going new for forty-three. This one's eight hundred dollars. Oh off. well, this is the. <laughs> this has the midnight silver metallic. That's why the better color. It costs a little. <laughs> Wrong. Right. There's a forty-two over there. Hmm. Weird. But yeah, they're still selling the demo models out. It's interesting. Do you think uh, we're seeing a more long-term demand slump with this inventory climb for three S and X? It seems like from. Well, you've been tracking with that one website that yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pull that up. We're starting to see more of a increase in supply, mm-hmm. which is good because it will force Tesla to actually change tack because right now they've had nothing but a huge not necessarily monopoly, but they've been able to operate in whatever margins that they deem that they have <laughs> or I guess that they want right. to. Uh, they operate in their own borders and they can push them as far as they want or contract them as far as they want. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think this will force them to finally change up their approach for at least the Model 3, but also S and X with the numbers that mm-hmm. this website claims to be tracking where they have a huge amount of them, which hopefully means that maybe we get the 69 420 Model S again. Which uh, I would love that. Then only makes me consider a Model S at that point. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> but that's a great uh, price. Who knows? I mean, kind of. T- well, I think that's maybe what's nice is that we're finally getting a lot more competition out there. Yes, a lot more different yes. options that are a lot more uh, unique, and it's starting to finally itch at Tesla's demand lever where it's finally Mm -hmm. pushing that back, which is only good for us as consumers. But Mm -hmm. as Randy can attest, how good is it (laughs) with uh, Mm -hmm. other things that are outside of that realm of not just the price, but other incentives and all that. So kind of depends, but uh, time will tell. Yeah, I'm all in favor of it. Time will tell about my uh, savings and worth it. I mean, the fact that the performance Y is the cheapest it's ever been at the time of me placing that order is pretty cool. I feel like yeah. we actually pulled up. We found out we were. I don't know if I said this to you guys then or if I. I don't know if this is public knowledge or not, period. But we found out exactly one year ago, March of 2021, we were. This close to placing an order for a Model Y because that's when we found out we were pregnant. And so we, I know I told you we were looking at a Y because, oh, you know, we want to, I had, I had my decoys about, you know, up, updating, getting another fleet car, but it really is because of having Sage. And we, we went through our emails the other day and we're like, wow, this time last year, the quote was like 62 or 64,000 for the for mm. a it wasn't even the performance it was the long range or i'm pretty sure it was the long range mm. and so it was, it was over the 60s for sure like six i think it was 60 yeah i remember because we, we ordered our car about a year ago now and <laughs> there was a twenty thousand dollar gap between the three and the y that was what mostly pushed us to the three that's why we walked away from the y we were like I, that's mm, no interesting because no. i put in my order 
this time in March, four years ago. <laughs> you did? Oh, wow. So, March, I guess that's right. That was a pre-order. March is quite the order time, isn't it? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, Which it is. Makes me question to you, Randy. What's up? We got to see some new pictures of the Kia EV9 oh. recently. Mm-hmm. I don't think yeah. they've opened up any orders yet because I can't find anything. But do these photos and the previous numbers that they're quoting where they're confident that they're going to attain 300 miles minimum or maybe average or maximum, who knows, I guess. They're going to attain 300 right. miles with one of the trims that they offer with the EV9. Uh, does this maybe just slightly make you reconsider going the Tesla route and going for this pretty stylish uh, six seater that um, has rotating seats for the middle passengers and can charge at Tesla superchargers now, thankfully because uh, the magic dock is now a thing and Tesla's opening those chargers for people. It's a cool car, but that's that's a lot of car. <laughs> it is. I I don't know if I qualify for this as in <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean qualify? Yeah. Um it's it's I, I'm a household of 3 and I and we don't have an interest of uh of expanding that. Uh, number anytime soon, or maybe I'm just trying to throw off the scent. Who knows? Friends, anymore? I don't even know. family. Well, I so that that's a that's a cool point because what friends and family are here, guys? No, I'm joking. Um, well, who, again, like you've said in the past, you don't know how long you're going to be in Virginia. No, I yeah, true, but who who is going to go in my car that? If it's like uh, remove the novelty element for it, it should <laughs> I be re- should I be getting a car for that occasion? That's the exception of people who yeah we'll just we'll just ride in Randy's uh, EV nine. We yeah just 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 go with the Vasquez's. We'll it's just ride with what's them. happened with Drew. It's only Drew and but, Louise, but they drive a whole bunch of family and friends to and from the airport, that, which kind well, of bars them from sticking In a Model with, 3. Yeah, in a Model 3, <laughs> which bars them that's, from committing to purely an Aptera. So well, the exception that's also because influence. they live close to family. Everything is family-oriented that way. I don't know. The way, the way I see it, I only have one family member at a time that comes to see us. So it's either Sage's grandma... Or it's my brother. It, it very rarely has it ever overlapped. And when there is an overlap, there's a there's a like I have family in Ohio. They drive down. They 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 got their own. They got the uh, Kia uh, Telluride. Telluride. That's what Te- this Telluride. is basically. As I know, TV, I know. But yeah. and, and and they and they're a household of four plus, meaning they're animals. They got two dogs. So that that <laughs> they got yeah, confused for a second. Kids, animals. <laughs> they, they they are that's that's who the, the tell you right is for them and that's a car i'd be like you need that now because you you got you got at any given point you can have uh six different living entities in this vehicle all at once driving and that's a that's a car for them for me when kika passes you know hope she's with us for a long time I'm taking a break on dogs for a while. I I got I got an 18 year commitment for the next you know. I'm I'm going to take a break for some time. So well, that's I don't until see. the kid brings home a dog. Yeah. Nah. You think it's 18. Yo, I know, right? I know. <laughs> it's actually going to be 25. I'm going to introduce him to the military. That's how health insurance works. <laughs> Have you yeah. met the US so- government? Um, but uh, that's it's just that's a lot of car because i don't don't know the scenario where i would be doing that because i'm not gonna let go of the model three and we're definitely gonna go with the y so if it's a matter of like oh family members and they and moving them around while they're out here visiting they'll just take one of the other cars if they feel safe and comfortable enough to operate an ev and if it's a matter of transportation 
I wasn't having issues with like to and from locations for like airports in the three. The only problem the three offered was when it came to these like, let's go to Ohio to see the family. Let's go to North Carolina to see friends. That that became the eye opener. I would have loved to have the wife for the Florida trip. That would have been so much fun. But people aren't in my life, in my circles, people aren't flying to me that frequent where I think I need a bigger vehicle for that type of capacity or p- people who come to me are driving their own vehicles there it's it's very solemn that i have a situation where um i need to be the sole transportation i offer it don't get me wrong i do but hey don't work, don't get a rental we'll pick you up and that works but then it's no more than one person at a time i don't have that scenario yet so no today that would not be the car for me i wouldn't be interested in maybe when i get out of virginia we'll see where my life's at at that point and that's something i'll consider but i don't know i i i don't know i i, I, I would be efficient with my time and do and do uh <laughs> i would do aptera before anything else if it comes to efficiency <laughs> but i think it's an interesting r1s competitor considering i think it's a bit cheaper than the r1s but it misses out on a bunch of things the r1s has going for it it's missing a seat a seat because the r1s is a seven seater this is a six seater this doesn't have a six uh, seven seater option no uh here i got a picture right here well i know there's a six seater but i'm saying that's the only seat configuration uh that's a great question i don't know about that i'd be kind of surprised considering how many hyundai and kia love having like 80 trims of the same car so i was i wasn't sure that Ionic 6, there should be only one trim of that, and they have, like, 15. I'm like, what are all these other <laughs> trims for? I've seen the six-seater, but I I didn't know that was the only option. I guess, hmm, that kind of affects my opinion on it, actually. <laughs> Hold on, I don't think I like you anymore. I don't want to play <laughs> That makes it, like, so it can sit one more than my car. Yes, but it's got yes. incredible wow. storage compared to your car. <laughs> I don't know. I was impressed. We I don't we've know. moved uh <laughs> Huh? You can put stuff on the top of this car and inside of the car easily. But I can't do that? No, because you still need a roof rack. Well, a roof rack's a heck of a lot cheaper than this thing. <laughs> I could I'm saying I we moved a filing cabinet and a desk with our Model 3 in the past week and it I was very impressed. We we folded down the second row and we always looked at it and we were like, "Ooh, that's kind of big. Do you think that'll fit? And we're like, oh, yeah, it does fit. And we got it. The stuff. It's a lot of long, like, what do you call that? Width? It's not width. It's like Length? depth. Are you talking about depth? Yeah. Depth. It's, it's, it's a very deep trunk, especially with that second row. It's so much better than our old car, which you could fold down the second row, but the opening between the trunk and the seats was like small. Like That's not much a of a comparison. A, a lot of things are better than the old car. <laughs> yeah. We we have a low standard, but uh still I've I've been impressed with like my sister was like, Hey, I'm gonna go up here to pick up a filing cabinet. Uh do you wanna come with me? And she was thinking of taking her truck and I was like, Can I see a picture of the cabinet? And I looked at it, I was like, I think it could fit and she's like, oh, I don't know, but it fit and we moved it and saved a lot of gas in the process. So I <laughs> you it's probably not good for lots of storage and sitting five people but i tend in my personal life at least to find one or the other i'm either moving a bunch of people or i'm moving furniture or something typically not two at once um but my thought process was for like the soccer moms or people that are driving around town that need to you know that have big families and stuff this would be a lot more easily affordable than the R1S or um, what's the other one? The Volvo. Isn't that at like 90000 or something? Yes. In terms the of... C40? Yeah. C40. I think the one you guys loved. You're talking about the EX90 X... versus the XC90. EX90. The XC90 exists How much right does now. that start at? They haven't provided a price yet as far as I can tell. Oh. But the XC90... Okay. Uh, I think starts at sixty. Let me just. Well, I meant the all electric one, but I thought I thought they gave a starting price. I can't remember. 
starting at 80,000 is for the EX90. Is that the all electric one? Yeah, the EX90 is the new electric one. Okay. Huh. Well, this one, the at least the EV9 is starting at um roughly according to the leaked specs like mid 50,000. So that's a lot more digestible for people if they do need a three row, but honestly the six seater only is kind of rubbing me the wrong way. I'm like, well, are you a people mover or are you a one extra people mover? <laughs> like, I don't know. Just well, one more than a sedan I think and some cargo space. But we, we harp on like the Cybertruck not having a six seat. Yet we harp on this for having six seats. I didn't. Yeah. Well, it's because it's like a truck primarily, like the best selling trucks, I would say. I don't know. This is like the Wanda meme. You you have six seats and everyone loves you. I have six seats <laughs> and everyone hates me. Well, a lot of people like the EV9. Fair. To be fair, I'm just I'm just offering a double standard. I don't think there is a safe way to do six seats in the Cybertruck. Personally, I think Mike's argument about how horrible it would be in a collision to have someone sitting right in front of that 18 inch screen, and couple that with Brandon's leak about how the dimensions have all shrunk by about 5% since the original prototype. I was like, yeah, like it'd be kind of cool to have a bench seat in the front, but I get why they're not doing it because there's probably not a very safe way to do it. EV9, I'm like, there's definitely a way to do seven, like as an option. Um, I'm not saying you have to only do seven, but the whole point of having a three row SUV I think is the market is inherently more interested in moving more people. Like that's the whole point of doing three rows um, where this starts to feel more like, okay, it's three row, but mostly so that, you know, I'm also not a fan of the model X six seater either. So I, I hold, <laughs> luckily they have a seven seater option, but um, have you found anything about a seven seat option or I haven't found any, I've been looking, look that... I've honestly, <laughs> So I was sitting in my truck that has six seats and I was looking at it after our podcast last week, trying to figure out where is the airbags for the mm. the middle seat. And uh -huh. it's kind of hard to figure out from the center console. Uh, at least like there's a whole bunch of like instruments and screen there. It's a small screen. It's not a big screen. But I don't even know. Where I'm reading something that says it's a uh, seven seater, by the way. So there's okay. an option. Well, never mind then. Um, so, <laughs> so no more canceling of the EV9 then. Great job, Kia. <laughs> you did it. You, you did led. It. Sorry. <laughs> I, there's not been a prototype or an unveiling of it, but they say that um, the third row is a two seat, and the second row comes in either captain chairs or a middle bench. Okay. So. It just does its captain chairs a little bit differently than the Model X. Yeah. Do you like that rotating approach? Could you see yourself doing something with that? Or I think that I could know. get trying to very think of the use crazy case. with kids. With like yes. having kids in the far back and kids in the middle back, I guess. And then just rotating the seats around and then they start kicking each other with their legs and start throwing juice packs at each other and all that. Uh, it can get pretty crazy. But I think it's nice. I've ridden in a was a, the VW bus, the actual bus. Um, and <laughs> I knew. It, I was like, uh-oh, here we go. There's one. That, it's the one that I rode <laughs> Babe, and come had here, People one. are talking crap. Get in on this. <laughs> they had one uh, she ever reverse wanted. seat. And I sat in the reverse seat, and it, it was interesting. It, the forces are different on your body, yeah. or at least they feel different because, well, you're rotated 180 degrees. But Yeah, you can't I, see where you're going either. No, you can get used to it if you sit there a while or by a while. I mean like a couple trips, but yes, I don't know how often that would be used. I think with kids, this would be a hit. Like they'd be rotating the seats all the time to hang out with their siblings <laughs> or friends or whatever. It'd be like their own little limo service yeah. basically, which it is. Uh, but I, I think it's a better approach than what Tesla's done. Cause Tesla's is very like luxury focused with like, look, it can like mm. go forward and back and, can kind of fold on itself but not much really but like it can do this it's got yeah i don't i don't like that six these features design. or whatever yeah well where uh kia's just like yeah it it kind of rotates so that way you can like 
easily get in if you have mobility issues or if you want to rotate to have like a true uh, what's it car called? seats maybe that that's too. a lot easier to install if you rotate the Nah, that's over the that's that's over uh hyped it's not that hard to install with a regular stat stagnant well, seat i can't disagree with you because you you have a hundred percent more experience with that than i do <laughs> so uh, one of the things i was kind of playing with just right now is, uh, when uh <laughs> this is way more specific than it needs to be but just i uh i just we went over the three month uh mark for sage and that mm-hmm. involves changing like bottle sizes and adjusting the mm-hmm. car seat and stuff like that so i had to go in and we had to reinstall some stuff on our cars and i was like hey do you want to do on your yaris and she goes hopefully by time you know now he's three months older hopefully he doesn't have to ride in the yaris ever again i was like "Ooh, that feels good to say so we're gonna uh install that the the dock that we have for the yaris put that in the y uh-huh why Yaris, they're both starts with Y. That's kind of cool. Just realized. Anyway, oh my god! So I never saw that. It was meant to be. It's the same car. It was meant to be. <laughs> it's so, not the same car. Um, <laughs> yeah, installing installing the car seat uh, and even adjusting car seats afterward. Really quick. Really how is easy. it in the three? Uh, how is it as in like Ad- putting in the car seat and <laughs> taking him, taking him in and out? Is it okay? Stupid easy. Yeah, we bought. I got a latch Good. one, so like I got the dock, and yeah, we were gonna. If I was able to test drive the performance the other day, if I could have done that, um, I was going to uh, get the his car seat without the dock uh, strapped into the Y just fine. Because the thing is, uh, most new cars have these little hooks underneath in right. between the car seats. And that's what mm-hmm. you would use if you wanted to have the dock. You can use the clamps and just hook them, and then you're set. And then you then you can go a step further, use the hooks and the seatbelt, and the seatbelt goes underneath the docks, and it clicks fine. What am I? No, I'm not even going to look at that. Um, or you could just use Later. the seatbelt. <laughs> and regardless, installing, like let's say you're like, I don't have a dock. I just have a car seat, and now it's going to be, you know, the uh, uh, standard. You, you just – uh, take the uh, the belt and you just go right underneath the little hoops. There's these little hoops and they're like very user friendly. Hoop here, hoop here, click, and then when it fastens, it it gets the car seat snug just right. So, nah, not an issue. Yeah, that was that way makes more me feel good. Yeah, I was, I'm like, <laughs> me too. no, I I like hearing it out because I'm like I have a Model Three, but I don't have a baby, but. Uh, really simple, yeah. Well, it's nice is you're Good. gonna be a test bed for both of us because I'm sure, whenever Drew and I eventually have kids, at least already you have the experience with the three, Randy, for putting car seats and dealing with a kid in that car, and then in the next <laughs> a month from now you'll have at least some experience with the Y. So mm-hmm. it'll be great to pick your brain with every single minute detail about how did you navigate <laughs> around this with the car and the kid. I can't wait because I know just from looking in the back, like I'm going to have so much more headspace. Here's the thing that's frustrating why I can't wait to have a Y. I go to take Sage out of the car seat in the back seat um, if I'm going to do like a diaper change. And we had to learn how to navigate the three because I'd take him out like this and his head would just go Bonk. R- bump right on top. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Shh, shh, shh. But that, like, he'd be bumping his head, and I'm like, man. And I know, like, especially in the back right here, this little part really creeps up on you. And, you know, we are, um, we are a vertically challenged people. So, Mm-mm. and even I, like, this is kind of vertically. How does, vertically how does the car seat fit in the driver's seat, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow starting him early uh, that's when i uh, that's when i like boom boom go drive <laughs> kika it's your turn to drive today oh, your turn kika yeah so i, I can't wait to have back. all that headspace opened up oh it's for, yeah um, yeah just moving because it it's getting them in and out of the car seat like, because I can unclick the car seat as a whole, and then the car seat becomes like a stroller, or I can just mm-hmm. like a carrier. So clicking that in and out, stupid easy with the three. 
I only suspect it's going to be only easier with the Y. But getting him out of the car seat, like his body, I'm now going to have all this extra room. I remember being like, this is spacious. I did, you know, in, in Mike's car and then looking at the showroom and seeing it at the time. I was I'm like, glad yeah. I got to witness that the first time you ever sat in a Model Y. It was cool. That was at the factory. Yeah, we were all at Fremont together. That, that was, was fun. a fun experience. I liked uh, I li- I, I different I headspace then because I'm thinking you do have heads. Yeah, I remember thinking that like, wow, this <laughs> this is um this would be good for a family vehicle. Not thinking I was gonna have a kid anytime soon, but yeah. I'm curious, not in the vehicle itself. The EV9 is, eh. But <laughs> I'm, I'm more curious in how the market would respond for it, mostly because, like, I'm not in the market for a three-row SUV, and I don't think I ever will be necessarily. But um, the concept of basically offering a lower-range version of a three-row seven-seater that's cheaper than all the other guys, like, will people who are just you know, the soccer mom crowd moving lots of kids or moving lots of people around and they need storage space, but maybe not so much interested in road tripping. Like, are they willing to take that compromise? Because the leaked specs for the range is not amazing. I think there will be one trim in particular that can just barely hit 300 miles, but I think the vast majority of the trims are going to be sub 300, you know, on the, the leaked specs, the entry level price is 56k and that says a range of 220 which is kind of low but i expect that with this design it's not very aerodynamic and i'm sure they're reusing the I, i've heard they're reusing the gmp platform so it's the same kind of powertrain and battery pack as the ev6 and the ionic 5 they're just putting a bigger brick on that same chassis so you take a range hit but like, will there be a decent number of people that are willing to say, yeah, you know, it's not the road tripper, but I just, I, I could visualize a lot of people opting for that just because they'd be like, well, I'm picking up like my kids and my kids' friends and going to sporting events or going to parties or what, whatever they want to go to. So, but on a long distance drive, I don't need that many seats. So I'm not too worried about range. Um, and maybe... Tesla will make that easier with the V4 superchargers and their longer cables and magic docks and everything. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about sharing your precious supercharger network, Randy? <laughs> are you still upset or are you well okay with the rollout? I don't. Man, we were masked up. Mike found some photos. <laughs> we were ma- my yeah, hair. That was an old one. Oh my goodness! Wow. My hair was long. Okay. Anyway. All right. That was don't mind us. Just reminiscing. What yeah, a great, like, what a terrible moment. Like, I don't think either of us were prepared for the picture. <laughs> no, we weren't. He couldn't, he could not have taken a worse photo of us. <laughs> You're I wish we could have superimposed a, a better version. Of <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Thanks for okay. criticizing anyway. my photos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, you already did in the last podcast, you jerks. <laughs> I did not. Cr- in fact, I complimented your solar eclipse. I liked it. I'll accept Re- that. That's true. We did. got the receipts. Rewind the tape. <laughs> <laughs> the All right. How do I feel about sharing the supercharging? Well, I haven't seen them uh, implement any of the new. Uh... I looked, man. I, I looked. think they're the closest to you out of all of us. They are. Yeah. New York. The I looked it up. You can well, you can go on the me. app. I almost I almost uh uh doxed my son. <laughs> um, hang on. Just him, not you. His location, yeah. not yours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still check the Charger non Tesla section to see if they're opening up new ones, and I'm no, not the really seeing. one is 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 right outside of Marquez's office, apparently. So there it is. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear that everyone you hear that yeah hey he's not hiding his location anymore so why should i <laughs> just do um, what he does just go there you know it's crazy to see that like that the f-150 lightning oh barely fit granted i know there was some snow blockage there but it shows it how snow. i don't like that 
if the new superchargers we see being rolled out, <laughs> I don't like. That. I don't <laughs> like that we have to adjust for other people because their mm. their network choice is wrong. I think that's I... the beauty of it, though, is that <laughs> it's only at a few places, and those are only going to grow in regards to places that offer the magic dock. And so for right now, you're not really affected because probably the closest ones to you don't have magic docks. And whether they get retrofit or not, that just means there's still other places around that may or may not have the magic dock. So you could just go to there. Yeah, it's a slight inconvenience, but at least you have that option. Versus like how they're adding like what seven thousand in the next year? Two years, but yeah, yeah. seventy five hundred. I think they said there you go. would be open. How the map routes those superchargers will dictate how I feel about it. Because if it takes me to a mm. place that is Tesla only, or because I don't want to ship. Listen, <laughs> that's a box you gotta check. I don't, don't take me to a I, charger with. Don't any you other. devalue my cars, plural, <laughs> by these inbred legacy uh, automakers and their Randy is ugly, so elitist. I I the pompous era. Of my life. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Drew. Because <laughs> I don't don't take me to these other locations where I have to share my air and electricity with these mouth breathers over <laughs> here just wanting to <laughs> Okay, then. <laughs> All right, listen. All the lucid air buyers are mouth breathers, I guess. They are. <laughs> if, if, no. If, <laughs> oh, man. They spent 180 grand instead of me, who spent 50 grand. <laughs> Dummy. I can't be bothered. <laughs> the actor so, person rolls in. <laughs> not not only that, it's not, it's not about the price. It's not the price, Drew. It's the principle. Okay. These mm. guys chose to get a non-Tesla but want to use a Tesla network, you hypocrite. Just say what you wanted to say. I so you could, think it's a choice. It is a choice. Listen, they okay. chose to use the wrong network. <laughs> they chose to get faulty charging. That's not on me. That's not on us. That's not me. Okay. I'm over you know here. it's got to make headlines at some point. If there's ever a period where a supercharger is busy and there's a line that's what because I'm of non-Teslas, I'm going to that's going to go. I'm throwing fists. Everywhere. They're going to catch these hands. <laughs> I'm like, you're out of. You are blowing my mind right now about how disrespectful you are. How about you go to that Ford dealership down the road where you picked up this thing with your Mustangs? Oh my God, I see the Mach E everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm like, one of these days they're gonna take it to because there's a there's a uh, a gas station um, that's more than a gas station called Wawa out here, and Wawa, <laughs> Wawa and Sheets too. Sheets is another one, but Wawa is like. Did your son name that one? Or? <laughs> no, this is this is before my time. But Wawa has every. Every stop I had to go along the way, most of the time, took me to a Wawa gas station. And you go inside, and you can like order like coffee. They make subs like, at the at the ready, kind of like a Chipotle or Subway or whatever, but better quality. And I'm charging, and like there's always a charging spot open for me at these gas stations because there's enough. And then I start to see how this area would get polluted with Mach E's and <laughs> volts. And bolts and EV nines and EV nine and, and I and I get <laughs> frustrated. It's like, no, take that stuff to the parking garage at that mall down the street where no one wants to look at it. <laughs> My goodness. Out of here, so I can sit here and just walk inside the gas station, use the restroom, get a drink, and let's go. <laughs> I see. Okay. Well, I, don't, I think I know how Randy feels. I but don't think you do, Mike. No, I'm not done. <laughs> <laughs> I yield my time. I want to know these additional comments. <laughs> if if a supercharger starts getting really busy, how would you feel about them deactivating the magic dock during peak use and saying only Teslas can use it during peak time, but then in non-peak time, then magic dock no, becomes no, available? No, 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 <laughs> no. Why? I don't think that's a good idea. That that goes against what we've been trying to do is make 
at least well. Oh, good. I've got we, a counter, but go ahead. What we originally <laughs> wanted was everyone to be. On Mike the same wants porch. these non Teslas to have like a golden star of David on their <laughs> like side, so we can identify when they're driving by which one they are, and if they try to park near our elitist section. <laughs> We take that car where they think is a car washing machine, like the yeah. self drive. It goes in, and it doesn't come back out. <laughs> the, peop- the people are fine. They're you safe. You forgot to shave this morning, Randy. You had a- <laughs> I was in a hurry. No, no, it's, it's the winter season. I had to grow up. I'm just saying. Oh no. No, I'm not right. Kanye. I'm not Kanye. It's okay. <laughs> hey, don't timestamp this. You're gonna cut that out. He's cutting this out. <laughs> I will not be silenced by the truth. (laughs) I'm pointing. Speaking of oppression. I'm pointing. Don't (laughs) cut the camera off of me. (laughs) I know you took the camera (laughs) off of me. I went like this. I will not be silenced. Uh, You want to edit this week's show, Randy? Oh, oh, don't give me that type of power. (laughs) I've forgotten everything at this point. But what I can say is. You You said it goes against what we're trying to do. No, I'm trying to help you get back on track. <laughs> you said it goes against what we're trying to do, Mike. What do you mean by that? Like, like a train. <laughs> now you're just derailing me on the train subject. Uh, <laughs> disclaimer, all the words that Randy said before are not mine. Uh, the words that come out of my mouth are my own and not what comes out of his. But um, <laughs> now that's out of the way. Uh, I think having a... Was it a usage limit in terms of like if the supercharger is filled and then there's more non Teslas coming to charge and they limit the magic dock to where a non Tesla cannot charge but a regular Tesla can, even though that if it's pretty much filled and there's already non Teslas there, it's likely that. No one else can charge there just because no one can fit in that location unless you're a take on or something like that. Uh, I I would completely disagree with that idea of being able to turn off those ports or not allow other cars that are non-Teslas to use those ports just because it goes against the idea that we opened this up to unify the electric platform for everyone in America. That, yeah, we couldn't get everyone on the same port because as we can tell so far hmm. the only other company that's really been outspoken on adopting the next connector is aptera no one else has really been like yeah we'll do that too even like niche like garbage company or just utility truck companies <laughs> aren't even adapting next they're going with ccs and so it's like okay well the next best thing is opening up the chargers to non-teslas and to bar them from using them just because it's busy there doesn't make sense to me just because they're as much in need of charging their vehicle as we are at that location at that time. I think it's much better to just populate more to make it more like gas stations and be able to provide that many reports in a given area. And yes, I get that you can't help it when like, let's just say here in the Bay uh, at five or 6 PM, You've got a whole bunch of Teslas charging at the nearby Target at from uh, near my work, or mm-hmm. nearby there another Safeway, or another Safeway, or a Target parking lot <laughs> as well. It's just like there's mm-hmm. so many different charging locations in the Bay, yet they still all get swamped around five or six p.m. So is the answer oh, yeah. to be just because there's more cars coming to there that are non Teslas? is the answer to bar them and make them stay at their pitiful charge points or EV goes. I don't yeah. think so. No, <laughs> I think the mindset of smarter charging, I'm not allowed to talk anymore. <laughs> so I can't You've been talking this tonight. whole time about Hitler. <laughs> I've been quiet for the last 30 minutes. <laughs> what? I need to talk I about Hitler. Way to- <laughs> No, you you got to let Mike finish so I can disagree. Yeah, no, let him cook. No, um, he's, he's making good points. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead, Mike. I'm just <laughs> My point is I don't think that's the right approach. I think the right approach is to encourage better charging behavior for people. But if you can't change that behavior because that's just something we have to deal with our culture right now, then the next best thing is offer more locations 
and as much as mm-hmm. Tesla shows, they can put out a crazy amount of them just because of how New York, their factory in New York is structured where they can just put them wherever they want, just as long as they've got the infrastructure to put the cabinets and everything else. Um, mm-hmm. If they can do that and get the land and all that, uh, the licensing, I don't think that's a bad option in the long run of just, oh, so many people use these chargers in this area and it always gets bottlenecked. Let's just add more chargers <laughs> because there's mm-hmm. a finite amount of people, but it's, I mean, well, there's actually not, well, there is a finite amount of people, <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at is Thanos. you can't, you can't change culture or mindset quickly. That takes time no. with many people. But what you can do is action in regards to providing more charging locations, or at least maybe making agreements with other charger charger providers like ChargePoint, EVgo, Electrify America to provide a better service or to partner with you into just better hardware and tech. Um, so that way we don't have this problem of everyone crowding the superchargers that maybe it's actually a better idea to have Tesla's go to an EV go or an electrify America just because Tesla partnered with them and was able to provide a better service, which is a weird dystopian future of, I'm not going to take my Tesla to the supercharger because there's too many people there. I'm mm. going to take it to the EA charger because it's more reliable for some reason. So <laughs> I know, right? Mm. I talk yeah. crazy. <laughs> Okay, so the way I take it is you're against the concept of kind of preferential treatment from the charging provider. No, I'm totally for it. No, yes, you had it right. (laughs) Okay, well then, how do you feel about the fact that non-Teslas have to pay a higher price for the charging than Tesla owners? Like, they're already offered a cheaper rate. And if you want the Tesla rate, you have to pay 12 bucks a month to access it. The answer to that is capitalism. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, it's the same thought process. But Maybe. here's cuz I, I agree so. that I would think it doesn't you should go ahead. you shouldn't yeah, I'll, I'll just make this quick so that way you can get to your next point. But Thank I don't you. think just because of the choice you made for your electric vehicle dictates Oh, oh well, now this is going against me. Okay. Maybe I should have let you talk. <laughs> but let me finish my thought then. Um I okay. don't think just because you chose an F150 Lightning means that you can't charge at a specific location. I think you should have that freedom to charge at the location. But that capitalism mindset of we can charge you more at that location versus in another location that just isn't built well or isn't as mm-hmm. um, smart with their implementation of that hardware and software, I think is or fair reliable. game. Yeah, I think that's fair game. The counter I have to the mindset of, well, if it's got the magic dock, just let whoever shows up first basically charge. Don't deactivate the magic dock if it gets busy, is that not all these vehicles are charging in the same way. So obviously we're all on the same page. I think everybody's on the same page. We need more charging stations and tons of money needs to be spent on increasing the availability because EVs are only a tiny fraction of the global fleet. So even 10 years from now, we're still going to be saying, yep, they need to build more. They need to build more. The, that problem is always going to be there. But in the hypothetical scenario where it's like, okay, surge, there's a holiday rush. There's a lot of people tr- charging. There's a lot of people driving, um, particularly with slower charging EVs that chose a different voltage architecture that can't charge as fast as the Teslas can, or put the charge port in a different place. Now, if you leave the magic docks open... Uh, theoretically, if it's crowded by Bolt owners or Mach-E owners, you're, you're going to be charging half as many cars and it's going to take longer to charge them opposed to turn off the... Ma- Let's say you have a supercharger with like 10 stalls, right? Mm-hmm. You can fast charge up to 10 Teslas at V3 speeds, you know, 250 kilowatts. But if that CCS location gets occupied by five Bolts, now you're char- you're charging five people, leaving the line to grow, and it's taking longer to charge those cars up. So more people are waiting, 
it could be the argument of, well, should we give Tesla owners first dibs just because they paid us and they're our customers, so we give them preferential treatment? Or you could also make the argument that, well, just allowing Teslas will result in the most number of EV customers, regardless of brand, will get their charge quicker and they'll get back on the road quicker and leaving less people stuck in a line. So it's like a, an efficiency argument, not just a, a selling point argument to be like... Um, Right now, we're getting so busy that if we keep the magic docks open, there's going to be a longer wait than if we uh, leave them closed. Fair. I get that. But I think that's (laughs) more of a problem with just... I don't think... Just because a charging location gets full doesn't mean that you need to put restrictions on those people in regards to you can't charge here anymore because there's a bunch of other people who are already here that are charging. Um, In regards to what I mean by that is of course. Yeah. Like if the, if all the stalls are taken up. Yeah. If it's like a majority bolts is going to take like four times longer to charge than 10. Very true. And that's, I think that's a headache that or not a headache. That's a growing pain that we have to deal with, with uh, Mm -hmm. opening up the supercharging network. It's a bummer. But I don't think that should lead to the implementation of limitation. The lim- what am I trying to say? You shouldn't be limiting the amount of cars at a charging location artificially. Like that shouldn't be a slider that you should be able to actuate, uh, because that's not what they do at gas stations, or at least that's not what I know of. Yeah, it gets slower just because more people are grabbing juice out of it. Uh, juice being fuel, but it's not like someone's going out there with a cone saying, nope, there's already four Dodge Rams here. You can't take your Dodge Ram here. You have to go somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, I just but if Dodge there was Ram. one brand that, I mean, it's different because it's software, right? Like one brand is in control of the vehicle, the charge port location, and the the charging network. So I just see it as an efficiency standpoint. It's like, we just don't want a big line. We just want to get people in and out as quickly as possible. We can do that a lot faster if we restrict it to just Teslas in that emergency. And you would ideally turn off the location in the app so it wouldn't show up as an option to... So maybe that's a good idea. vehicles. Is that maybe instead of limiting it in regards to like actually you going there and the dock not working, just take it off of the map for a short time because... Oh, yeah there's someone who wants to navigate and try to find a charging location. And it just so happens at that time that that charger location has five bolts or whatever. Uh, and mm-hmm. maybe, yeah, the algorithm's like, that's not a good idea having more than five bolts there or else it gets pretty hairy with the amount of people waiting you, to charge. You let the people that are CCS charging finish up, but once it's established that it's too busy, it's like, okay, once they put that magic dock back, we deactivate that stall and say, oh, it's not available if you're trying to go there. Sure, I've been rerouted no. to other locations just because they filled up. And mm-hmm. that, yep, me too. I mean, it's Same. it's common practice. And if, if we can teach proper EV, um, not etiquette, but like uh, <laughs> literacy Behavior. about how, about preconditioning your battery anyway, assuming all these cars Pre-anyway, in the future can these- get the preconditioning down, you would have it already routed, and if it's not going to take you to the, okay, <laughs> why it's distracting? That guy, that's why I don't look at the viewfinder. I just gotta look at me. <laughs> Hi, ready. <laughs> but if you, uh, if you put in a destination to go charge and you go, um, it, it should be as simple as like you don't even know that it's been turned off because of congestion. It's something that's like, okay, I need to get charged. The option and isn't bu- provided. Bu- 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 yeah. yeah. You, you just, you never know. It's just plop there, pick your thing, go, go and and choose which look you want to go. Um, I think my thing about that, uh, I like, I understand where you're coming from, Mike, but you, you're like, they don't do that at gas stations, but we're already kind of doing it now. We already have two standards because we can't unify on something anyway. It's not as simplistic as USB-C or lightning because, that could just roll out in the next model and we have cables galore and it doesn't cost that much. It's a different monster when we're dealing with, you know, transportation and they're, these are your privately owned vehicles. I, 
I, I don't understand why... Like, jokes aside, opening up the network is cool if people would adopt it, but I, it is my hope that we will open up the network is because... Not that they come use the, the the stalls that are already installed there, but put those – get these other cars to switch to our standard, the way Aptera is going to do it, <laughs> if, if they make it. I've lost I don't, hope with that. <laughs> I don't have an issue with with sharing a stall if it's if all vehicles were made equal, so to say. And what I mean is at a gas pump, everybody's spending maybe no more than, I don't know, two minutes it takes to fill up your tank. You're in and out. But the mm. fact that we are done in under an hour, but other cars won't be, is already it's it's already unbalanced as is. I, I don't like the idea of having f- for for Tesla owners, not even just like taking me out of the equation because I charge at home anyway. I don't really care. Um, that somebody has to sacrifice a spot because the other guy has to take longer. It's not that guy's fault, okay? Like, I, like jokes aside, it is what it is. If they have a leaf and that was their thing, then that's their thing. But the fact that that car just can't take in the same amount of battery at the same pace, and we're the one left to have to wait or go find another location, <laughs> it might be as simple as like rerouting it, sure, but. That shouldn't be on It'd us. It'd be like when- a car with a gas pump and one car that has a straw, and you have to f- try to find a way to get the gasoline through the straw to I get don't, into the gas. <laughs> like that's the difference in speeds. Yes, I, and I, I don't I don't blame the the customer at the end of the day. But this is this is definitely legacy auto. Like it's their fault. It's their fault for wanting to be stubborn with it because we know better when you 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 don't you really don't you're stuck in your ways. You had one successful thing that went off. A century ago and now you think you you have the keys to the kingdom and it's and and the it's your way or the highway and we've proven it wrong with startups with these startups that are working and now they're being forced to adapt it's their fault they need to flip the flip the bill for that one get it on their other electrify america if that's the one they wanted to use then you then you would use the standard that tesla opened up then and you go put it at those stations and let and let them deal with it because they wanted to punish the customer at the end of the day about will this one work i don't know roll the dice let's see what happens but our little walled garden works for us and i want that to be universal for everybody yes not at the expense that we we lose consistency or or maybe c- continuity there, there's there's an expectation i have that when i punch in my gps thing and it routes me to a charging station and i get there i have an expectation that i'm there i'm in and out i i don't ever get there and the numbers are off and it's like oh now i got away i don't think i've ever had a way except for the 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 fashion valley location in san diego that that Hmm. poor location my goodness i can only imagine the hell that those guys have to live through now but i since then being more rural areas or just away from the big metro cities it's been awesome whether i'm at a gas station or a hotel or a bowling alley it's been awesome and i have a certain expectation now and especially because Look, Tesla says this is our this is our goal. We're going to put these many stalls and we're going to start building more that will now have the adapter. And we're going to put more, more, more. So that way it's just as uh, convenient as gas stations. Awesome. And that is as us like kind of like, oh, hey, we're kind of paying for it. You know, unless you have one of those old cars, supercharging ain't free. We are paying for it. It's going somewhere. And then if you're an investor, you're paying for it in that way too. So in some ways, like we're fronting the cost to to keep building our walled garden, our ecosystem to be more vibrant and to be working for us at the expectation that like, look, when I need to use it, I need to use it. When I'm in my house, I expect the master bathroom to be open for me if I need to go use the bathroom and I have guests over. No, go use the other bathrooms. I'm going to go use my bathroom. It's like I have a certain <laughs> expectation about yeah. that. I think the software side of it um, is a great way to immediately meet this issue or at least try to uh, 
get some semblance of a solution for this problem being rerouting mm-hmm. people around turning off locations for whether you're on the tesla network in a tesla or you're not and you're on a bolt and you're using the tesla app to try to find one either or uh, yeah it might be a good idea just to take that off artificially yeah you could still go there and yeah you can still charge it's just you're no longer kind of advertised on the map anymore that, Hey, there's a charger here unless it frees up a bit mm-hmm. more. Uh, I think that's a great way to do it while waiting for more chargers to route out, but to, mm-hmm. to hardware limit it, I don't think is the smartest idea, uh, especially for progressing forward as a society that wants to adopt electric vehicles as a standard. It would get, that. get messy if there were people uh, that weren't relying on the app. I've heard of that, where they they just know that there's a charger there. They're not checking to see if it's online. They just, oh, I remember it's there. So if mm-hmm. Tesla deactivated the magic dock because it was too busy, and then they go there, they're waiting in line with all the Teslas, and then they finally get ready to plug in. It's like, oh, no, wait, it's offline for you, but it's not offline for everyone. Which is why that I would say... Be, an edge case but... side of it by just turning it off on the map rather than turning oh. off the actual plug EV if it's a charger you've been to I'm like sorry. multiple times they could do a push notification you know they could they could be like this one is not available for ccs for the next four hours or something do you think I don't like, like it should be open during just like non-congestion like a uh, uh, rush hour and stuff like that it, mm. it, it's it's open between uh 6 p.m <laughs> and 6 a.m it blocks out uh until you know i, I don't know 9 a.m to uh, 3 p.m and so there's these little blocks where it's like when you like when most traffic is being pushed out th- that's that we're gonna lock it for uh tesla's have the priority and they do what they got to do. They come and go, and, that, and then it, we won't open it again until X amount of time. Because that's how they do, like, for example, like, I, I bring it up because it's like that's how certain HOV lanes behave. These are blocked out unless you have multiple passengers until a certain time frame, and then it's open to all traffic. And if and sometimes it's even, depending on the road, it can be both ways. Like, this is open going this way, and then later on in the day going that way. Same, mm-hmm. same, uh, you know, uh, adaptation of like you know it's time-based do that for the the supercharging stations and like between the hours of 6 a.m and and 9 a.m a three-hour period these are just for teslas and from 4 p.m to 7 or 6 p.m whatever these are for teslas outside of that open for everybody do what you got to do it's not bad that's me compromising (laughs) without the whole (laughs) hitler thing (laughs) Okay. <laughs> yeah so i i hear you saying you're in favor of charger segregation is what <laughs> you that. well <laughs> that's segregation we so are a part you, of a membership that we that paid for HOA? <laughs> uh, hoa's kind well of hoa they're you getting mean a HOV. lot of uh, <laughs> the, yeah, HOV yeah. 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 HOV. hoa hoa is a whole other I mean, thing basically the same <laughs> yeah. yeah same concept but uh, the, a lot of the charging infrastructure is being paid for by the government, not necessarily Tesla. But hey, who pays the government? It's all of us. It's we paid for these chargers, whether you like it or not. But yeah, I do think those kinds of dilemmas, which I haven't seen yet, will be interesting. But it it just makes me all the more hopeful that we can get the V4 superchargers out faster than Magic Docks. I kind of wouldn't mind if we just had 10 stations with magic docks and then all the rest were V4 because they've got the longer cable and they also have varying voltages. So they should be able to charge lucids and bolts and stuff still pretty like efficiently. At the end of the day, you're still going to be limited sometimes. Like a bolt will never, never charge as quickly as a Tesla. But to alleviate that, they could put on charging caps, I guess, to make it a bit more fair to say you could charge for 20 minutes and then you got to get going in the bolts. Like, but that's not enough time. It's like, Sorry, we got more people we need to charge. We're trying to more evenly. You're the iPad the OS of software. You're not real. Go, go <laughs> over there. You're not real. Longer Rather the than let them sit the there. 
everyone's fast charging and topping off in 15 minutes and then driving and then the bolts are just sitting there for over an hour like yep this is how long it takes and everyone's growing the line and stuff so it almost makes me feel like there should be a mandate on how fast vehicles can charge like maybe we should start cracking down on how many slow charging evs are out there i think you're getting too many good ideas from the european union <laughs> At least on a mile per hour basis. You, you must know. not have 50 kilowatts is... a lightning charger anymore. You must have USB-C. <laughs> well, if I make it slow, you cannot have slow USB-C. It must be <laughs> fast. I'm in favor of laws that force companies to make better products. Let's say that. <laughs> Jaws would disagree with you. Stupid d designs. It doesn't have to be better, though. <laughs> uh, doesn't have to be, but it doesn't hurt if it is. Right? Like, who is it hurting if they mandate that the product be better? Uh, supply lines Apple. or supply chains and okay. cost, yeah. Cost to the consumer, cost to the producer. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts real bad. Yeah, but it hurts both sides. It <laughs> It's like... I could see a future where the bolts cause a lot of charging problems simply because of their slower speed and it's more shiny. and more people switching. And it's like, oh, this has created an issue now, so how are we going to deal with it? Is there going to be more and more people? I guess uh, if it doesn't happen, hopefully, then we're all good. But yeah, having just an insane number of charging stations is obviously the best case scenario to wear. Hopefully there just aren't lines but I still, even you know, gas cars have been around for a long time, but I still hear about uh, the Costco lines. When people are getting gas at their Costcos, that's still a thing. So the vehicles have been around. They all fill up really quickly, but there's still lines there because they get the lower prices. So I could see Tesla superchargers or whoever. Maybe it's EVgo. Maybe it's EA. Oh, theirs are only $0.10 cents a kilowatt hour. I'm going there. That's way cheaper. And then you got the big old line because everyone wants the lower price, you know. Mm -hmm. I could. That's be where to oh, see that's how this that's unfolds. a nightmare. That's where I hope we stay a novelty, and people just think EVs aren't going to make it, so that way we keep reaping <laughs> those benefits. Randy's pushing the fud as much as possible. Yeah, the yeah. Batteries Tesla's are doomed. terrible. They explode. Tesla's doomed. They're doomed. Don't, don't buy don't this buy stuff. Them. Hydrogen's the future. And he's driving around his Tesla. Don't buy oh, it. Don't buy the it. The Model Y is Horrible. pulling the Model 3. It's terrible. Don't get one. <laughs> they explode when you sit in them while they're charging. They actually start electrocuting you. It's a bad idea. It's always terrible when I have to yep. charge. I have to stand outside of it. This is why. Yeah, it's exactly why in my personal life. If I meet someone that believes those things, I don't correct them about it. I'm just like, yeah. Because I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to see the supply stack up for Tesla's like their demand constrained that means like hey they got to try harder and now what are they doing with the Model S and X they're trying harder they're offering ultra red they offered the steering wheel for those who want it they offered the new glass like they're improving things left and right because they're trying to make it a better deal they're pause, dropped pause, 10 grand pause, off the price pause. What, how do I tell if it's from Fremont or uh, Austin 11 FRA character of the VIN one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fremont. Okay. I lost. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> well, there's our answer. <laughs> Followed by Thanks a bunch of about. ones and an eight. Mm. Oh, well, now we know you're okay. Do you, do, do you know the rest? <laughs> well, one, 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 eight. We know that you are one, the one, 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 eight. <laughs> which actually you are you're not too f <laughs> if you take that subtract one 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 yeah one 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 zero 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 you're not too far from my vin <laughs> and if you want to know where your model three was built you just think it's in fremont because they don't make the model three anywhere else <laughs> it's very easy I don't need to see the VIN. I just look at the car. Oh, I missed the goes, number. Well, I guess you don't You don't know my VIN because I actually missed a number. It's not all ones. I was There's like, that doesn't make sense. Seven in there. I think so. Okay. Now everyone seven? knows. <laughs> Maybe. Let us know your guesses for Randy's. 
<laughs> Whoever guesses it keeps the car. That's our giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss my butt. Because Randy <laughs> secretly ordered a Rivian. Stuff with Rivian possible. Yeah, it's Fremont. All right. Well, cool. So, I, you're an I engineer. Wanna... Name every number. <laughs> <laughs> I can actually. Don't you? Actually, don't, a programmer could do that too. Just count plus okay. plus. That's it. Increment. Well, I have C plus plus when I could do B plus plus. It's better. <laughs> Mike, blink. Thank you. Open your eyes, Mike. <laughs> that's not blinking. That's closing. I don't want to look at uh. you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, look at me. It hurts too much. <laughs> I can't go on any longer. Okay. Well, I liked the uh, I liked the discussion on that one. That was fascinating. And uh, Mike, wow. did you have something to add about your airbags? What your are you doing, oh Mike? yes, I totally interrupted Randy at no, one point. Um, what are you What are you doing, yeah, Mike? The, the airbags <laughs> that uh, no. the airbags in my truck because we were mentioning or uh, we were talking about where the heck would Tesla put an airbag because there's a giant screen for the middle yeah. seat in the front. Where the heck would they put one? And I found in mine, mine doesn't even have an airbag in the middle. It just uses the right one for the right passenger. Oh, the just the right airbag just, is way bigger? It just influ it influates, oh. inflates it larger. Uh, it's, That's it's an interesting actually, idea. It's quite entertaining, actually. That doesn't seem very safe, though. I imagine... You you hope that when they go forward, they <laughs> are leaning to the right a little bit. Yeah. But basically, no, I, I lean to the left straight into the center console. <laughs> <laughs> look at look at that Stop. look at that airbag chart, and now picture that with like a landscape eighteen inch display, and how the airbag would have to really work around it. Like, <laughs> it just smacks the screen into your face because it, is, it just <laughs> smacks the screen sideways. Yeah. Basically, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I get why they don't want to do the six seater. Like, I understand it's going to be upsetting to people, but I was like, if you don't care about safety, just sit in the bed. If you really don't care, there's a place to sit back there. Well, Honestly, the bed might be safer than the the bench seat <laughs> i don't know if you've seen this concept but someone made an airbag for bicyclists i have seen that they could just do so that you're saying the six the passenger should wear that <laughs> no 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 they don't have to wear that <laughs> if it's they're just, in the bench seat they wear that <laughs> no what you have is in the headrest for that seat the airbag deploys so that it deploys around the head and then whatever impact oh wait no but then they go forward and then their head goes out yeah right right. yeah so they have to wear it's a tricky it's a tricky dilemma and i understand with tesla's safety emphasis Mm -hmm. why they cut that out but the um, headrest deploys i still see it as it's going into the screen the screen pops (laughs) off and then there's an airbag underneath Uh they just shoot the six passengers so they don't feel (laughs) it They just put a gun behind the screen, and if it detects the crumple zone crumpling, then it just... That's a very American... He went out... Solution. We're doing you a favor. <laughs> just put a gun behind it. Did you see that old Onion article about the Prius? No. Uh, maybe, I don't oh, know. Oh, it's great. It's basically like uh, the Prius... This new Prius is even better for the environment because it just kills the driver, so there's less emissions. <laughs> <laughs> Like we've identified that it's not the best thing for the planet is for you. To, yeah, that's why it was funny. Is because it's totally true. It's like it's, you just get in the car and this big like dagger comes up and just and they're like now you're dead. So there's less emissions. Reduce your carbon footprint by dying. Oh my goodness! Thanks, Toyota. That would be better than the BZ4X, at least. If we do return next week or the week after (laughs) or at some point in the future, I do want to talk about yokes and why Lexus is doing maybe an okay job with them. But more on that later. Yokes. Randy might have his Model Y the next time we see him. And why? Yeah, I'm... 
and why the yoke might grow on me for being used in the Cybertruck. <laughs> He did not care what you had to say, Drew. He wanted to finish his thought. You better not interrupt the man. Wow. He's keeping that cyber truck. Good for you, Mike. Okay. Stick it to the Good man. You. you yoke that stuff up. It's a woke, but. <laughs> go woke, go broke, or whatever they say. Get woke, go broke. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>